year Associate Dean for Graduate Education at Baylor School of Medicine. She has been a member of the BCM faculty since 1993 and has received numerous awards, including two Fulbright and Jaworski Awards and the prestigious Barbara and Corbin J. Robertson Jr. Presidential Award for Excellence in Education in 2007, awarded to only two four-year Four, year fa four faculty members each year. She completed her undergraduate degree at Duke University, receiving a BS degree in psychology magna cum laude. She received her medical education from the University of Oklahoma in 1989 and completed her residency in psychiatry at Baylor College of Medicine in 1993, serving as chief resident for 1992-1993. Perhaps her most outstanding qualification for this evening's remarks is that she's the mother of Georgiana and Francis. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Andrews. So I'm laughing because I thought I was going to go after Ross. So um, first of all, I'm very honored to be here. Thank you for asking me to speak. Um, I actually was worried because I thought I was going to follow Ross and I was thinking I might have to wear a denim shirt and denim shorts and a holster because a recent time I saw Ross at a basketball game it was a denim on denim day. Um, and then I'm also afraid, I haven't seen a guitar, but I was afraid that if Ross went first and played the guitar that I was going to be in serious trouble if I had to sing after him. So I'm actually glad that, I mean, you still might have. Um, so first, I wish to congratulate the 28 seniors who were inducted this morning into the Cum Laude Society. Your academic success is truly something to be celebrated. And since in most studies of academic performance, previous success predicts future success, so you guys should be comforted and excited about the potential and promise for your future successes. I'm reminded of a moment when some of these seniors were actually maybe kindergarten or first grade, and Kevin and I were watching them out on the playground, out in front of the Harrison house. And Kevin looked at me and said, literally, there must be 20 budding CEOs out there on the playground, just look at them take charge of things. Um, and I actually think he said, just look at them bossing each other around. Um, but I was gonna be nice. Even then, it was clear that this group of kids were gonna be doing great things. I'm also reminded of an experience um, recently um, at medical school orientation. And Dr. Michael DeBakey, a world famous heart surgeon who received the Congressional Medal of Honor in 2008 at the age of 99, um, addressed the first year medical students and he said something like this. You have to dedicate your lives to medicine. You have to be married to medicine. You can't afford to have any distractions including your family and friends. I haven't seen a movie in over 40 years. I eat, drink, and sleep medicine. I live at the hospital, and you will have to do the same thing if you want to be a good physician. And there was silence among the new students. And a few minutes later, Dr. Sheila Goodnight-White, who's a professor and pulmonologist at Baylor, um, she had received the Outstanding Teacher Award the year before, and so she was speaking to the students. So she got up and said something like, the most important thing for you to do is to keep balance, <laughs> to find moderation, to maintain your relationships, to go to movies, to stay up on current events, and to have fun. You cannot be married to medicine 24-7. So I looked around to see what the students were doing after these two different messages were given, and they were um, trying carefully not to look completely confused on their first day of medical school. Thankfully, the Dean of Students spoke next, and he's an um, excellent otolaryngologist and is now the chair at Baylor College of Medicine in otolaryngology. And he said, I'm going to predict that the vast majority, probably all of you, would be better served listening to Dr. Goodnight White than to Dr. DeBakey for professional career advice. He said, since doc the Dr. DeBakey's of the world come around maybe once in a lifetime. The Dean continued saying, you may invent something like a heart pump, or you may be the first to perform something like heart bypass surgery, in which Dr. DeBakey in 1964 removed a vein from a patient's leg and used it to work around a clogged artery near the heart. But the dean said, I recommend you go with balance. So I tell 
tell you this story um, just to speak a little bit about balance and resilience and about finding um, what works for you, not necessarily what other people, no matter how famous or important or powerful they are, uh, what they tell you to do. You guys are such high achievers, and you've probably already got great goals set for yourselves for college. And honestly, you should have great goals set for yourselves because you have many talents and gifts that you need to use wisely. I don't actually worry that you will stay motivated or focused or driven. I believe it will be more of an issue actually for you to prepare yourselves to face even greater stress and challenge and to do so fine with balance. You've proven that you can excel in a most rigorous academic environment like King Kate, but that success will not necessarily insulate you from the stresses you will face when you get to a new place with unfamiliar faces, when you feel alone, even when surrounded by thousands of other students, when you believe that you are the only one in organic chemistry who does not understand the lesson that is being taught, because no one else seems to be asking for help, when you are sleep deprived beyond what you've experienced yet in your life, and when you might be afraid to fail for the first time, and the academic workload and social challenges of college are overwhelming. Oh, this is going to sound kind of like a downer, I just realized. The consequences of not managing stress can be profound. In my job, um, there's been recent studies of internal medicine residents, and about a third of the interns in medicine residency programs meet the criteria for major depression at some point during their year as an intern. And the top reasons that Texas physicians get in trouble with the medical board or sued don't have anything to do with their medical or technical knowledge. They have to do with them not managing interpersonal communication or professionalism skills, and usually it's rooted in their failure to manage stress. So I have some good news and bad news for you about being resilient and managing stress. The bad news is some of the opportunities to get better at that have already happened. For example, a study of rats showed that the factor most influential in predicting resilience in adult rats who would be good copers if you can imagine yourself testing a rat for coping effectively. <laughs> the most positive predictive factor for those baby rats was how much their mama rats licked them, which is the equivalent of hugging for humans. And since you're no longer baby rats or baby humans, that time has passed. But we'll keep hugging you. <laughs> um, human studies have actually shown that you have better chances of having good coping skills if you have good genetics and a higher parental socioeconomic status. Not yet can you change your genetics, and um, at least as our speaker said, maybe you can continue to enjoy the socioeconomic status of your parents and live in their basement. Um, and we probably will keep hugging you nonetheless. But I wanted to talk with you a little bit about strategies to make sure you're ready to hand handle the stress and to be resilient. Um, I read a book recently called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. And the good news for you is that um, you are not having to deal with the kinds of stress that zebras are dealing with, which is urgent, life-threatening, finding food or becoming food, um, that kind of stress. On the other hand, you're dealing with the kind of stress that can cause ulcers or high blood pressure or depression um, or headaches. And so, um, since we don't live on the Serengeti looking for food, although Georgie and I did watch The Lion King the other day, um, <laughs> instead, <laughs> we drive the streets of Houston dealing with traffic. We worry about final exams and AP exams and SAT and ACT exams and college applications and interviews. We worry about the stock market and saving money for college and weddings and retirement. Our bodies can handle intense extreme stress for a little bit of time, um, as long as those periods are relatively short. It's almost as if our bodies know, I can do this for a while, but I can't do it for very long. It's very common, uh, or at least it was when I was a student, for students to get sick as soon as final exams are over, or for people at work to get sick as soon as they finished that project that they knew had a time limit and was very intense. <coughs> Our bodies can also handle a great deal of chronic stress as long as we don't let that stress overwhelm ourselves to cause chronic illnesses. To us parents, 
as our children prepare to go off to college. We might wish for them to be spared from too much stress. But that might be a little bit like wishing they never fell off their bike when they were learning to ride their bike. They learned important lessons falling off their bike and getting back on their bike. Studies have actually recently shown that young adults who had the most trouble achieving successful independence were those who were not given enough opportunities to deal with stress and failure. So, maybe it turns out as parents, we probably actually would be better off, instead of wishing for less stress for our children, to wish for them to be more resilient and to have good coping skills facing the stresses and failures that they will face in college. I'm pretty confident that this group of high achieving, playground dominating, cum laude receiving students will find plenty of stress in college. The really good news is that there actually are some ways to improve your resilience and your coping skills. Dr. George Valiant, a psychiatrist, studied male Harvard graduates for over 40 years. At the time he started the study, there were just male students. And he found the following characteristics among the adults who coped the best that many years after graduating from college. No smoking, minimal alcohol use, lots of exercise, normal body weight, absence of depression, presence of a happy marriage, and a social coping style which included social connectedness. Other studies have shown that individuals with an internal locus of control and a belief and perception that I am the master of my own destiny, or I have an ability to influence and impact the outcome of things around me, these individuals have a better ability to cope with stress. Said differently, studies have shown that the ability to control even very small parts of your life actually turn out to positively impact your ability to handle big stress and to deal with um, big things when they come along. So each of us, I think, needs to find our own way of creating that internal sense of control. I'll mention just a few proven ways that you can try when you get to college. Focus on the here and now. Try to keep focused on only the most pressing demands and stressors. Rather than trying to control future uncontrollable events, or trying to fix things that actually aren't even broken, or trying to change things that all have already happened. Take the time and make the effort to find and nurture a healthy social support system. It actually really takes time with people to develop trusting relationships. And I can remember, and I will predict, that it will take you at least six months before you feel like you've developed the kind of relationships with the other kids at school to the point where they can actually help you manage stress rather than be part of your stress. Um, another way is to help other people. Studies have found that people helping other people, especially when no one knows that you're doing it, can help your health. And that being respected and needed throughout one's lifetime predicts successful aging, coping, and resilience. Find times and ways to relax. Exercise, meditate, read for pleasure, pray, garden, cook, babysit, watch ESPN Sports Center, etc. <laughs> it has been proven that these types of activities can improve your mood and they actually reduce the impact of stress on your body. Finally, remember again that the past success is the best predictor of future success. But I also would remind you that I bet your successes in Kincaid in the upper school have not been without um, some hiccups or some imperfections, and so your reasonable expectations about college should be the same. I'm reminded in closing of one of my favorite theories from studying psychiatry. Dr. Winnicott spoke about the good enough mother. For Dr. Winnicott, the good enough mother did not mean accepting mediocrity. Rather, it meant striving for excellence, just not perfection. Studies have shown that good enough might even be better than perfect, in large part because it turns out that striving for perfection actually tends to decrease your performance and cause you more stress. So I think that'll be a good place for me to stop. I want to wish each of the seniors that you can be good enough students in college. Students who strive for academic and personal excellence, but not perfection. And I wish for you that instead of wishing for you to have no stress or less stress, 
I actually just hope that you find your own unique way to manage stress. And lastly, I wish that each of you will be able to do this without getting ulcers or being chased by wild animals. <laughs> Thank you for letting me speak on this very special occasion, and congratulations to all the seniors. Space, JKL, semicolon space, in the hopes that we would learn to type. 
Middle school was a fun time, and it all came down to the eighth grade musical, The Wizard of Oz, My Prime. <laughs> That's when I really blossomed as a student. <laughs> With Taylor and Lizzie as Dorothy, uh, Katie as Professor Marvel, and me as the Almighty Tin Man, we had the cast that Broadway couldn't beat. <laughs> but our glory was short-lived, and I decided to retire as a performing artist and give somebody else his moment of fame. <laughs> In ninth grade, we received our second wave of students, including George, Alec, Aaron, Trevin, Cameron, Anshul, Roma, Sydney, and Saria. And that started the great transition. We started off the year at the freshman retreat, trying to break down all those you know, awkward barriers and new friendships. And I didn't realize this until I started becoming friends with the new students, but it's kind of intimidating to enter a school where everyone has been friends since they were four. But they handled it well, and sooner or later, everyone had found their place in the class of 2014. So how do I really sum up these past four years? Well, I like to think of it as the hardest, most stressful, most fun, and most enjoyable four years of my life. In high school, you become an adult. You learn to drive, you learn how to manage your schedule, and you learn how to care for yourself so that you can be prepared for college. And I can honestly say that this group of men and women are some of the nicest and most respectful people I've ever met. And even when I may have not been there for them in the past, they've always been there for me, and for that, I'm incredibly grateful. On the seventh grade Europe trip, for example, when I was having a tough time finding some friends to hang out with, Ryan and Rohan would invite me to hang out with them in their room. Every football game this year, after screaming myself hoarse and probably making myself look like an idiot, um, Thomas and Alec would always be ones to come up to me and thank me for supporting them, which really, really means a lot to know that you're being appreciated. If I'm ever having trouble in physics or math, Sam is always willing to explain them to me even if I don't understand a single word that comes out of this mouth, which is most of the time. That's where he speaks in binary code. Uh, every time I wanted to quit studying for history sophomore year, Annie would literally scream to me over the phone until I put my book back up. Aria, Trevin, and I had the delight of suffering through Mr. Longoria's AP Spanish class, <laughs> which was a delight, and we all got five, so gracias, señor. <laughs> The point is, each one of us has experienced success at Kincaid due to our interactions with other people. And because we are constantly pushing, pushing each other and supporting each other, we have all had such a positive experience here. But a lot of our success is due to the lessons we've learned at this school from various teachers and staff members throughout the years. From Senora Lacey teaching me how to count in Spanish to Miss Miller hitting me over the head for not handling lab equipment properly. Each teacher at this school has affected me in some way, and I'm sure my fellow inductees would say the same. And I know for a fact that all of us, students and parents, wouldn't be in the same place if it weren't for our amazing deeds. I didn't realize how much Ms. Dorn had actually done for me until I started asking my memorial friends about their deans, to which they replied, our, our what? <laughs> Without the deans, the college process would have been at least 10 times more stressful, which is saying a lot considering how stressful it already is. So I'd like to take a second really quick just to give a big thank you to all of our deans and to especially Ms. Dorn for making these four years as pleasurable and as uh, stress-free as possible. And uh, last but not least, the parents. You guys have the most important job. You have to put up with us 24-7, no matter what, and you're forced to love us through the good times and the bad. Don't worry, Dad, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> You have to deal with a bunch of hormonal, teen hormonal teenagers, which can often be more stressful than being a teenager itself. I know for a fact that my mom hates second semester senior year more than any other year, because she wants me to do my homework so that I can go to college, and I'm obviously too busy doing nothing to do my homework. <laughs> but through all these years of arguing, I think it's fair to say that we're thankful to have parents that want us to test our limits, strive to be the best we can be, and achieve excellence. Because without that extra push, we might not be here today. Although we may not often show it, we really are incredibly thankful for everything this school and our parents has done for us, and for the opportunities that they have presented. In just a few months, we'll be going off to college with no parents, no teachers to hold our hand through every single problem. But I have no doubt that this group of students will flourish, and that these next four years will mark the beginning of their successful careers, and more importantly, their successful lives. Thank you.